Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today on the Dungeon Dive, we are going to be taking a look at Miru, an analog adventure game. And we are going to be discussing five things about Miru. So Miru is a little zine game, and it was created by Kelly Chance, aka Hinokoto, edited by Ryan Huff, and published by Mimic Publishing Collective. There are a couple of copies of this physical edition left. So this is topic number one, uh, kind of comparing the physical edition to a PDF edition that I downloaded and made into my own little book. So what you are seeing on the table right now are the components from the deluxe physical edition. I don't know if any of these are available anymore, but you got a really nice printed copy of the book and you also got access to a PDF copy. It came with some really nice D20s, a few little gems to keep track of some things. It came with a, uh, a little stapled journal so you could keep track of some things in your game. It came with a bag to hold the dice and the gems. And it also came with a little bamboo pen. A very th uh, thematic kind of uh, this kind of ecological uh, game. And it comes with uh, a little uh, sustainable pen that you can write with. So as uh, the Dungeon Dive progresses more into covering these kinds of games, we are also going to be talking more about DIY, about creating your own books. And that is going to be a topic that I am going to cover a lot more. I am getting more into book binding and we will be covering it a little bit more as the uh, channel progresses and as I get better at it. So I made this little PDF book just based off of, or, or this little uh, zine book, just based off of the PDF that came with my copy of the game. And it was very easy to print off into a little book and get it stapled. This was done on an old black and white printer that I had that was not very good. As you can see, it's a little faded at the bottom there. But I was pretty happy with this as a play copy of the game. I enjoy this a little bit more than using the PDF. And uh, But you can get a little more extravagant. I recently bought a new inkwell printer. And just this morning, I printed out... Madeline Hale's new book that is on itch.io and that is a traveler's guide to inns and taverns. We will definitely be taking a look at this in more detail in the very near future, but this book is awesome. But you can print your own books to make them look almost as good as any kind of zine you would buy. Here is a uh, book I printed for Glide, a solo and cooperative science fiction RPG adventure. This one was almost 80 pages, and that's about as many pages as I would want in a single um, PDF here to print a as a book. But I uh, this one turned out pretty well, too. And then here we have uh, Nuktamaran, the one of the little expansions for one of Alex T's games, Seekers Beyond the Threshold. And this was uh, also printed on my new printer and made into a nice little zine. So you can just buy the PDFs if you want, if you miss out on the physical editions and it's very easy to do because they come and go very quickly, you can make nice versions for yourself. Okay, so topic number two, an overview of Miru, an analog adventure game. Miru is a hex crawl style adventure game where you are creating a very simple character with a name, you will have health, you will have energy that you can spend to do tactics in a battle. You will have two very basic stats, your attack stat and your defense stat. You will be able to learn different combat maneuvers as your character progresses and you will have to train in those as you learn them. Then you also have a calendar where you will be keeping track of different days and events that will happen on certain days. And then your main, uh, the main things you're going to be keeping track of with your character are how many bits you have. I love the bits. The money in this game is a play on cryptocurrency, and I absolutely love it. It is hilarious. And they are called bitliths. And this says, in the early 2030s, some billionaire tried to replace all currencies with a faux gold token that had a code printed on it to represent an algorithm that was the real token. It was too confusing for most people and never saw wide adoption or much actual use. But now that money isn't really a thing. 
people needed an alternative for outsiders. And there were so many made that it was an easy resource free choice to make. Uh, very cool there. But in this, you will also be keeping track of uh, your what kind of equipment you are wearing, the weapons that you have, how much food you have, and uh, miscellaneous items there. And you are going to be going on a hex crawl here. You will be going, you will be picking a starting hex at the bottom of this map, and you will be working your way, uh, discovering the land, rolling on different terrain, trying to find different things, and trying to survive long enough to figure out the mystery and the story of the game. Here's a brief overview of the game that I am playing right now. I am keeping a very simple little two sentence journal for each day of uh, covering the uh, the topics, covering the most interesting things that have happened to me. Day one, set off, tripped, injured my ankle. Day two, hiked into a desert, found the ruins of a theater, found two bits. Day three, the desert continues north, more ruins. Aurora, I found an Aurora obelisk, had a dream of a strange woman. Day four, had a God event. That actually should have happened on day three. We'll talk about God events in a little bit more detail in a minute. Day five, impassable mountains, must turn back. Found the suburban gardens of ideas, and I explored that successfully. Let's talk a little bit about the side quests. So Miru comes with two side quest cards. And these will be triggered at certain points during your adventure. And these are a little, just a little kind of mini game that you can play where you will try to figure out how to get from the beginning point to the end. The colored spots there are uh, encounters that you will have, combat encounters. And then you will have certain events that will happen depending on uh, how much time it takes you to get from the beginning to the end of the map. Now you also get copies of those in the PDF version and I printed my own copies here and I actually printed them side by side. So then when I play them, I can fold them out like this and easily play them. And basically at the beginning of each turn, you're going to roll a D6. You are going to move that many spaces and you're trying to get from there to there while surviving the different encounters you will have and while surviving different combat. And you can usually find some pretty cool things in these little side quests and it's always fun to have just a little little mini game to play okay so day six fell down a rocky embankment injured my wrist day seven twisted my ankle in a sticky swamp uh day eight i headed east into the forest i found some ruins an old fuel station i found two bits i was getting hungry i was starting to starve on this day and i wouldn't even eat the old hot dog that i found at the gas station uh, day nine, the forest continues. More, re more remains of the old times. I found a tower of sleepers. I'm very hungry by this point. Day 10, I continue into the forest. How big is this forest? I, fi forest. I finally find a village. I purchase a knife, some fruit. I purchased some training. You know, I got that food finally so I can stop starving. And I took a quest where I had to travel to the mountains to retrieve a jewelry box. Day 11 was quest one from that village. I went into the mountains and found the family cave. I found the jewelry box, but I had to fight against a growler bear and I ended up defeating the growler bear. Day 12, I headed back to the village to return the box. I got 30 bits. I stocked up on supplies and that's where I am now. I am in this village. So a day is a very simple in this game. You're going to roll a D6. You're going to pick some terrain. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, head west here. So let's see what this terrain is. It is a two. A two is a forest. Okay. So uh, these trees are old. Everything was abandoned in the 2050s. The parking lots, suburbs, highways, and malls of the past have been overtaken by thick vegetation. Time has erased most of the old world. Small paths remain where bots travel from village to village. The woods are so dense in places the sun is barely visible above. As you walk past the trees, you get a strange sense that you're being watched by everything. So once you discover what terrain you have uh, gone into, you can draw it. I am drawing my terrain very, very simply. For a forest here, I am just using one tree to represent the forest. I have mountains, I have my villages there, I have my desert there, and there's my swamp. Okay, so once you go into the forest, once you go into your terrain, you're going to roll 2d6 to see what you find there. 
And we five. Okay, so uh, if you roll a two, you find nothing. Uh, three to five, you find a village. Six to eight, you find ruins. Nine to 11, you have encounters. If it is a 12, it's impassable and you have to go back. So the ruins, when you discover a ruins, you roll another D6 to see what you discovered. When you have an encounter, you roll another D6 to see what you haven't encountered. As you find villages, each uh, village becomes progressively bigger. Each village will have a shop, it will have a hotel you can stay in, and a quest that is available. The first village you find will have a small shop. The second village you find will have shop two and above. And the third village you will find will have shop three and above. At the villages, you can buy food, you can buy weapons, and you can have combat training. And you can also take on a quest. Each village has one quest that you can choose from. Uh, there will also be, at certain points during the game, there will be story uh, choices that happen depending on the encounters that you have. When you have a story choice, you're going to turn to the back of the book and you will be able to make choices and have just a little bit more of a more detailed adventure there. And that's basically how the game progresses. Point number three, this game has a definitive story. It's not just a random encounter hex crawl where you're trying to survive. You are trying to do that, but there is a beginning, middle, and end to the narrative of Miru. Let's read a little bit about the beginning here. So it is 2125. You stand outside of a party up on a hill with a view of the village. You notice your older brother and his friends sneak off down below into a field to mess with a helper F2, a farm bot that shows up at night to supplement the human day labor. You watch them fall to you watch them fail to tip it over. After a few shoves, you notice it starts to spark blue light from one of its legs. It trips and knocks your brother over. The friends laugh. But knowing everyone is drunk, you start heading that way to make sure he's all right. On your walk over, his friends run past you, giggling. You hear one of them joke that your brother is going to be in so much trouble. As you arrive, you see the farm bot sparkling or sparking and slinking its way into the woods. Your brother is still on the ground, and a large buster T7 stands over him. It unfolds its left arm and sparks up into a glowing blue light. You hear the robot say, Destruction of robotic equipment is prohibited. Your brother drunkenly yells at it and tries to get himself up. The Buster C7 takes this as a threat and pushes its glowing arm into your brother's back and through his stomach. The bot lifts him off the ground and tosses him to the side. It sees you approaching and stares at you. You rush to your brother and immediately start applying pressure to his wound. You yell for help as the Buster T7 sneaks back into the woods. So basically, your brother is killed by a rogue robot, and what you uh, your your story is in the legend of the world of Miru. There is a god that controls the robots, and you head off to find that god and kill that god, and in an act of revenge. But as you are exploring, as you are discovering more places and having little more story encounters, the things you discover, you discover that maybe your world isn't quite what it seems. And on certain days, you have these bolded numbers. And on those days, you are going to turn to these God events. And these are going to be the main, the main story arc. These comprise the main story arc, starting from the beginning, the middle, and the end, to where you will possibly face off against the God and maybe destroy the God of the robots to win the game and have your ending there. So it is interesting. A lot of these little hex crawl, game, hex crawl games, they're, they're just all about having random encounters and they don't have a ongoing story with an overarching uh, narrative drive, but Miru does. So point four, we kind of already discussed, and that was the side quests. I kind of jumped ahead, but I wanted to discuss them at that time. So again, these little side quests, they're called DLC in the PDF. Very cool. And they add just a nice little distraction from the overall game, from the base game. Okay, so point number five, uh, some things I'd like to see more of. I would like to see more side quests. I'd like to see a little packet, a little expansion packet, a supplement that includes maybe five more different side, side quests that can be triggered at certain points during the game. I think that would be a very valuable supplement to add, and it would add 
some variety to the overall experience. Because there is a beginning, middle, and end to this game because you are discovering a story, the gameplay I see could become a little stale over time because you will be experiencing the same story beats from game to game. So one thing I would also like to see is a small supplement that adds some variety, some more variety to the God events. Maybe each God event has a, a D3 variety where you can encounter on day one, you have a chance of three different things happening. On day 15, three different things happening. That could be in a whole little supplement book. And I think that would be a lot of fun as well. Finally, I think the game does need a little bit more editing as far as the rules go. There are some confusions. Uh, I think they just, they tried to cram a lot into a few pages. And for one example, when you find some impassable terrain, so when you find impassable terrain here in the forest, it says, the forest is too dense to get through. Better find another way around. Mark the map, move to another tile, and start your day over. Okay, so that's pretty clear about what you do. You kind of get to start again on that day. But let's take a look at that for the uh, swamps here. And that says, impassable. The water is too high. Alligators own this land. Best to find another way around. So I'm not sure if you also get to start your day again in the swamp. There's just a few little inconsistencies like that that could be made uh, a little more clear. But overall, I think Miru is a really fun game. It's especially fun if you keep just a very, very simple journal, just one or two sentences to remember your adventure. So by the end of it, you can look back and uh, relive some of your uh, classic moments in, the, in your game, some of the memorable moments. It is also a very challenging game. You can have really bad luck. And as an example, I want to show you the game that I was playing right before this game. I actually died on the second day. So here's uh, that journal. Day one, hiked into the mountains, discovered a village. I took quest one, the jewelry box. Day two, I headed into the mountain cave to retrieve the jewelry box. I was attacked by a growler bear and I died. Because it happened so early in the game, I wasn't able to find any weapons or any armor before I faced off against the Growler Bear. So my adventure on this game ended on day two. So things can happen like that, uh, but it's very easy to just print off a new character sheet and map and start a game again. Sorry, right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at Miru, an analog adventure game. You can get the PDF. It is on itch.io and you can print out your own copy and just have a nice little adventure without needing a whole bunch of components and a whole bunch of time and table space. Hope you enjoyed this video. We will talk to you later. Bye-bye.